Today I'm going to be playing around in my sketchbook. I was especially inspired by these two Dr. P.H. Martin Bombay India inks. When I saw them next to each other, I was just like, mm, that's gorgeous. I need to stick those two colors together in a drawing right now. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be doing. Grab your sketchbook and uh, yeah, let's get started. I will be filling this entire spread in my sketchbook, so both of these two pages, and I started it out with a very guilty pleasure sketch there on the left. And you'll notice I have some Copic markers up at the top there, and I also picked them out because they were very similar to the colors that I had chosen in the inks, and I thought they might complement each other nicely, or if I needed to like try and get some different details that I might not be able to do with the inks, I could do it with those because I've never used Copic markers with inks, and I thought it'd be fun to experiment and see how well they work together, we learn a very valuable lesson <laughs> that I will enlighten you all with when we get to that point. But here I'm sketching and sketching is my very most favorite part of any illustration. I just like the sketching process. It's why I love having a sketchbook because you just open it up and you throw something on the paper and I just enjoy that process of starting with a blank page and turning it into something and I definitely enjoy it a little bit more than finished illustrations which every time I create a sketch I always like it more than if I take it further to like completion and I don't know if that's just because I'm not as good at those following steps or if it's just because I know how much more fun I have with the sketching process and I put more time into it because it's the part that I love. <laughs> so yeah, here I am sketching that girly. You can see she's like got her like shoulders scrunched up and she's being all cutesy because <laughs> that's what I love to draw. Once that sketch was done and I had it the way I liked it, I grabbed my Bombay ink and a calligraphy pen with my favorite nib on it and I began inking out the character. One of my favorite things when people use ink is your ability to get those fine lines with your dip pen and then you can also grab like a brush and fill in larger spaces and the way that contrast is between like the white space and the dark space of the ink is oh that's just my favorite part when I see other people do it and so I've always been trying you know to try and <laughs> imitate that in a way that I think looks good <laughs> but in the end it always looks like I made it so <laughs> that's either a good or a bad thing. <laughs> Now here's actually a really good example of how you can take a dip pen and use it to fill in larger areas and you can get that seamless glob of ink look that I really like. So I just go in and fill in a space and because the ink is much wetter, I would say, than like a normal pen, when you go over those areas, the liquid just grabs onto itself and it just creates that flat surface that I really, really like. Look at it just underneath her sleeves, the shadow. Mm. I use the same technique and actually exaggerate it even more with this back foot. So her back right foot, that's her right, our left, but it's actually on the right of the left foot. That's really confusing, but I just filled the whole thing in with the dip pen. I didn't need to like grab a brush and it still fills in the space and looks like a flat, even coverage of ink. <laughs> Now, whenever I create something in my sketchbook, I don't know where I'm going to take it. So this is a good example of that because I'm actually blocking in some shapes and creating some dynamic contrast between the character who's filled in white and the page that's also white. So by doing this, it now separates that character from the page and gives them just a little bit more body and makes them look a little bit more substantial. I also decided to grab the yellow ink and just drop some in there and see what happens and see how it blends without actually touching it and just letting the ink do whatever it wanted to to create some like fun texture there. And as much as I love to experiment and make messes and try new things, sometimes it takes someone telling me what to do to really make something click. <laughs> and that brings me to the sponsor of today's video. I'm sure you've heard of Skillshare. It's a lot like YouTube in the fact that it's a video platform, but instead of it being like a free box of chocolates, it's a premium library of over 25,000 classes with sections on illustration, design, and more. With an annual premium membership, you can have unlimited access to every class on the site for less than $10 a month. I'm currently watching this course on inking techniques so I can implement the tips and learn ways to improve my inking and hopefully bring it to a more professional level. <laughs> there are over 7 million creators who are currently learning with Skillshare, and if you are one of the first 500 to use the link in my description, Skillshare is actually offering two months free access to the site. This next sketch, I decided to draw the same character, although I didn't realize it till I added that big poof of hair on the top of her head. And then I was like, yep, I guess I'm just drawing her from a different angle. So this is me approaching that character and seeing what they'd look like from a different angle, thinking of them as a real individual and how these different character elements that make them who they are would look 
if they just turn their head slightly because sometimes when you come up with the idea of something it looks cool the first time you draw it and then you try to draw from another angle and you're like Ooh, okay no that's actually really weird the problem i had when i was inking that first little sketch was that i didn't erase the pencil at all and i was kind of getting a little confused by where the lines were so for this one i actually erased a majority of the sketch but like left enough that hinted at the general idea before going in with the ink then I grabbed that magenta ink and started outlining the character. I didn't do anything too different with this one, even though I was still trying to experiment with it. I basically just inked this the same way that I'd inked the other one, other than that erasing the sketch thingy majiggy that I did. Um, and then I started blocking out this one's shape as well to try to give it a little bit more contrast from the page. And I kind of wish I hadn't because this is where I, I don't know, it just got a little messy, messier than I would prefer. <laughs> And even though this is creating contrast between the character and the page, the fact that I have that sketch up and to the left that has a very similar blocking out technique, it makes these two sketches look very similar and thus creates less contrast overall on this page. And that is what I don't like about it. <laughs> For the next sketch, I want to see how this big hair floomph would look from the side. So I decided to draw a portrait view of this character. Let me know what you think we should name her. I feel like pink and yellow are such vibrant colors. We haven't gotten to the yellow yet, but trust me, it's it. We, we fill a lot of these empty white spaces with yellow as the video goes on. Um, so I feel like her name should be like very perky and fun. Like, I don't know, uh, Priscilla. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> This character already has a little bit of a vintage kind of retro theme to it. So that little extra hair woomph on top of her head, I feel like really goes a long way to look a little bit like a beehive. It gives it that like 1950, 1960s vibe. So I tried to exaggerate it in this side angle and really, you know, just woomph it. Cause I mean, that, that's the only word I can use to describe the way that looks. And to break up the hair near the top of the like beehive, I added a couple flowers. Because I am approaching the hair in a much more simplified style than I may have done like a year ago, I've been trying to really think of things as shapes and simplify them. It does have a little bit of a downfall in the fact that this doesn't really look like hair. It could be mistaken for a hat. So I do add a couple extra strands here and there to try and really emphasize that this is her hair, especially when I go in with the color because I end up coloring her hair pink. And then for this one, I also erased the sketch and then started adding in that magenta ink. But this time I played around a little bit more with the tones and took that hair piece that's further in the distance. Instead of adding hatching like I used in the first sketch, I actually filled in that entire shape with the magenta ink. And I just find that visually pleasing. <laughs> While those were all drying on this next sketch, I was still very much intrigued by this character's hairstyle. So I really wanted to explore it even further and decided to draw it head on. This gave me the opportunity to add some extra lines and really try to push that character design and make it a little bit more unique and not like every other character out there. It also looks a little bit like I Dream a Genie, so that kind of goes against what that was. But <laughs> I added that like a little swirly up at the top of the bangs because I kind of consider these little swooshes around her forehead to be bangs and they all come out of like that high beehive up at the top. But to create the distinction between the bangs and the hair, I added a little like curly swirl up at the top and I thought that was kind of cute and unique. For the next sketch, I wanted to draw the outfit again because I thought it was a fun outfit. I like that drop shoulder floofy and the little scalloped edges. <laughs> I just wanted to draw the whole outfit again. And I also really wanted to play around with what I really liked about that side profile illustration, the way the hair that's behind the character is filled in solid. So with this one, I really emphasized elements of the character that are further away will be filled in solid and I feel like that just gives that extra oomph that I was talking about at the beginning of today's video where I was like I really like with ink when people do this and that you know <laughs> it's where they have those solid chunks of the ink and then they have the thinner more detailed bits of ink and it all just like works so cohesively and looks cool so this was my attempt at furthering that in my own art <laughs> And you may have noticed that even in the sketch, I filled in those areas with pencil to see if it would look good before I went in with the ink. And this one, I'm not happy with the hair. The hair has definitely evolved throughout these sketches and become something that it wasn't maybe necessarily in the sketch before. And this is one where I was like, mm, no, need to tone it down a bit. Don't really like the way it looks like a ponytail because in the other ones, it almost looks like 
the hair's down, but there's like some kind of pillow in her hair that gives her that volume. Whereas with this sketch, it looks like it's a ponytail of some kind and I wasn't having it. Nope, wasn't, wasn't where I wanted this character to go. I'm also not a huge fan of the face in this particular illustration. I feel like it lost something that the other sketches had. Like none of them look like the exact same person one after the other, but this one looks the furthest from the others, in my opinion. <laughs> And since I had such large areas to fill in with the ink, I actually used a paintbrush to fill them in. And I just made sure that the brush was very saturated with the ink before I went in to fill it in. Because if you don't, then you kind of get some splotches or you can get a little bit more opacity. And I didn't want that. I wanted it to look very similar to what color I was getting with the dip pen. One of the last sketches on this page, I'd call more of a doodle because it was just one of those quick, like, let's draw something with crazy big eyes and have a lot of fun with it sketches. And I just, I don't know, I was very swooshy, very expressive, and, you know, just had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> and down here, I kind of did the same thing because too much white space in a sketchbook for some reason gives me some kind of anxiety. I'm like, I need to fill as much as I can. <laughs> so I just drew another little character down there. This time a little bit more emotional, like she has a face that's expressing an emotion is what I mean by that. <laughs> and just getting used to drawing this character and finding out what makes this character look like this character. So what do I have to do to make it recognizable? And the more you draw a character, the more you're going to realize what makes this specific character this character. And this is one of my favorites. Just the very expressive, happy picture. Gives her some personality. Takes her away from that like flat supermodel just staring at the camera look. Gives her almost a story like, ooh, what's happening that's making her feel this way? Who did she see? Who's she in love with? Or what thing did she see? What passion does she have? These kind of sketches are always fun to draw and I feel like I don't do them enough. Now that the ink is dry, I decided to experiment with the Copic markers on top of this profile sketch here and see if the ink blended with them or if it would stay permanent and I could just use the markers on top. And uh, some areas were smudgier than others. I'm wondering if I just need to wait 24 hours for the ink to dry because I've heard things like that and don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so you can see it's smudging around. But maybe next time, since I'm, I'm, I'm really falling in love with these inks, guys, like they're really, really fun. And like line art's not like my favorite thing, but like when I use these things, it kind of makes me happy. And I don't know, I think I'm kind of falling in love. I don't know, they're, they're pretty cool. So maybe I'll try this again and let it dry 24 hours and test it again for you guys. So uh, yeah, let me know if you, <laughs> I'll let you know regardless, cause I'm gonna try it. So I don't know why I'm saying that. That's just dumb, anyway. Even though it was bleeding a little bit when you would add the Copic markers on it, I realized there's a lot of white space on this character and I could probably just avoid the ink, right? <laughs> That's probably famous last words, but it worked fine. I, I like it because with these um, markers, I have some very, very light toned yellow markers. And because of this, I can kind of blend them around and like blend it out to the white page. And it's, it's just very subtle color. And I really like that about these markers in particular. And so I decided to use these to color the face and just add like some subtle tone to the face and give like the nose a little bit little bit of tone in the cheeks and you know here and there and I'm, I'm really happy with the way that looks it's exactly what I pictured <laughs> do you realize it's a pun when you say the drawing turned out exactly as I pictured <sniffs> yeah just me okay now the hair was a little bit of a different scenario. I wanted to be able to fill that all in, but there was a lot of like inky lines, like little tiny ones that I really didn't want to bleed with a marker. So I decided to add water and a little bit of white ink to the magenta ink, blend that all out about, <laughs> and then color in the hair with that. And oh my gosh, doesn't this look like delicious sherbet? Like that color is gorgeous. It just makes me, my mouth's watering. It, look, it looks delicious. <laughs> Please refrain from consuming the art. Thank you. Imagine if that came over the PA system in a museum. Oh gosh. Because this mixture of ink was a lighter tone, I was able to layer it up and get like a little bit of a shimmery shine on the hair, which I feel like makes it look a little bit more like hair and a little bit less like a funky hat. So I'm happy about that one. Now I gotta be honest, I fell in love with that pink hair. So I decided to add the pink hair to every single sketch on this spread. So I started with like the one on the far left since that one was the most dry. And I, on all of them, I gave a pretty obvious and exaggerated shine of white, which I actually go over later and lighten up. Um, 
will darken up the shine <laughs> with more pink because I start layering up the pink and making the hair have some more dimension and giving it that shimmer and I really like that. So it's all about like layering up lighter colors and they become darker and more pigmented but you get those like variations and it's not all one solid tone, you know? So while that hair was drying <laughs> before I added the next layer, I mixed up a pretty light half water mixture of the yellow ink and started coloring in the dress. I wanted this to be a very flat tone so I just quickly went over the whole thing before it dried so it looked pretty even and solid. Then I actually accidentally mixed a little bit of the yellow with the magenta and it actually made this really pretty perky pink skin tone that I really liked. So I decided to fill in the character's skin with that. And I also, if I added a little bit more magenta to that same mixture, it made a fun blush color for the cheeks. And so that's what I did with these uh, characters on the side besides that side profile one, which I obviously already colored in the face. <laughs> Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't like how those two sketches on the left were very similar with their like pink blobs behind them. So I grabbed some yellow and just elongated the blob of the second character and stretched it out underneath the other three sketches on the right page. This just like, I don't know, it just grabs it and it just pulls your eye further to the right. And I, I like that about it. I think it's fun. And then I also blended those two colors together. So it's a bit more of a gradient. And I don't know, just watch, look at that ink. Mm, just the way it spreads. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Oh, I like close-up shots like that. It's like watching Juicy Ink. If you have never heard of Juicy Ink, go watch her. She does like the awesome shots, awesome cinematography, awesome art. She knows what she's doing. Go watch her. Thank you. <laughs> and then one of the last things I did over all of the sketches was I took that mixture of magenta and the yellow, but I made it a little bit more heavy on both the colors. So less water, heavier on both magenta and the yellow. And I used this to shade in the dress. I just love it. It's like a, it's like a pinky orange color and it looks so good on top of that like yellow dress. The tone just, oh, it's, it's so pretty. I love it. <laughs> and like here, it's really obvious right there under the bust, like the way I use it for shading. Doesn't that look good next to the yellow? Mm. And I also did it on this sketch over here. I think that one is also very obvious because I keep adding more layers as it dries. And then here I tried to add some more blush to the knees and the toes, but it was a little bit too magenta. So it kind of like altered the entire skin tone of her legs. And I had to like bring that up to the face too because then her face looked too light compared to her legs and it just looked like a self tanning disaster. So. <laughs> I just darkened up all of the skin tones, which I feel like lost a lot of contrast there. Then I took one of my favorite white gel pens, the Sakura Decores white gel pen. <laughs> and I used this to add some little highlights here and there, or specifically that one character is really blending in with her backdrop because when I was adding in those backdrops, it was to make the characters white of the page stand out from the rest of the white of the page. And now that I've colored in the character, it's blending in. So I need to add some separation between those two pinks. Yes, they are different tones, but they're too similar for my taste. So I added a nice white, I call it the sticker outline. I just love it. It makes everything look paper thin and I don't know, fun. I just love it, okay. <laughs> So here's what I came up with for today. I had a lot of fun experimenting with these inks and I was just so inspired by these two colors. You never know what's gonna grab your attention and make you wanna draw something. I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring the channel and allowing me to bring you more improved content in the future. I'm very excited about it. So thank you for that. But yeah, here's what I drew for today. Let me know what you drew today or if you drew along. I always love to hear that. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.